Hi, about 20 years ago, I think right to the day 20 years ago, I did a big project, scientific project on virtual reality and composing in virtual space. So we built a big uh, virtual cave and then we had a Silicon Graphics workstation, there was a Unix system running on it and we had a software by Fraunhofer Institute in Germany and you took up on this uh, shutter glasses, went in there and you had these objects you can work with and the objects were filled with music, you could put them together. 20 years ago, our prospect were, was uh, it will take another one or two years and everybody will have this. Now it's 20 years later and we have it right now. Daniel Rothman, Daniel Wootman uh, from 40 tones, 42 tones, uh, he did this VR synthesizer and that, let's have a look uh, at it and I'm going to give you some uh, ideas what I think about it and how you can use it. So here's uh, how you can use it. You have this room you enter, it's a virtual room, you can look around of course. This is an Oculus Rift uh, S here and uh, let's have a look how far I can get. I, I know these synthesizers uh, so that's an advantage um, and let's have a look. Uh, what have we got? Controls, create, discover, record. Okay, I can record it. There's some settings I can uh, look in. Uh, clear into a session, save, load. So I can do something that I can save. And let's look into create. So there's uh, some objects. What we all know is uh, there's a, a oscillator. So I say create and I can take the oscillator and put it somewhere. Uh, so I have some sort of stage here. And so where does sound come from? So I go into this create menu again and uh, okay, uh, I create another one uh, and go back and go into create again and there's different possibilities. I can use the headphones, I can use these speakers here, virtual speakers that are connected to the headphones, but I also can use uh, audio modifiers or control modifiers. Let's have a look uh, if I can get into uh, something uh, um, to put it into my mixer here. So go over the sound uh, card of the mixer and there's some lab out and I say create lab out and first thing you everybody wants to hear is is there any sound. So we have the out, we have the in, I can take the out and get, go into there and immediately I got this sound. I can put it on here. I control it, can, can control it by the, by the mixer. And rudimentary it's like you go in there and this is one point I really love. It's got this sort of haptic thing that I can turn my arm uh, and um, this is quite very interesting also pedagogically and I can put the other CV out into the second one here. I have two sounds and can tune them. So this would be interesting uh, to hearing pitch, uh, do a third or um, fifth and uh, play around with that. So uh, this is the basics. And of course then you have uh, go back and have a lot of uh, different modules here. Uh, you also have a drum module, you can take it, uh, create it, put it in here and everything is right in place. Oh now I have two, one, two of those and uh, also these can be uh, routed into the out here and you, you can trigger it. And the, you have different kits, yes, so um, together with that here uh, uh, you have one sound here and can and I can go in here again. Uh, so this is quite easy to understand and everybody who's uh, working with synthesis uh, is now exploring the whole thing going back and having a look what have we got. We got noise in here, uh, we got the, this uh, wave, an oscillator module, um, we have audio modifiers of course, we have an amp, we have a lab amp, we have a mixer, prime mix and control sources and uh, let's just take an LFO and see how it works. Um, uh, I'll take the LFO, so here it is, create, it's in there immediately, uh, put it in a little bit, yeah I need some time <laughs> to really do this good. Uh, and go out of the LFO into CV in <coughs> here and go out here and immediately you, you hear the waveform of the LFO and can put up the frequency. It's not going into self oscillation, I'm not sure. Uh, not really. And can change the waves. It can be bipolar into minus and plus and it can also frequency be frequency modulated by this uh, a second 
oscillator here. So all these things also reset have inputs and outputs and you can route them together. What about sequencing? Uh, is there any sequencer there? I'll put this more into the forefront here. Let me look, have a look. And then it gets a little bit more uh, uh, interesting if I get a sequencer. Um, let's take the lab sequencer here. It's an easy one. Let's say create. What does a sequencer need? It needs a, a sort of a clock module uh, to be clocked. Uh, I have a look. Uh, I go back. If I have a clock a module, module here, it's right in the sequencing section. Uh, this is very cleverly done. You find it immediately there where you expect it to be. And you have the clock here. And I take off the clock. And the clock goes, of course, into the sequencer. And immediately the sequence is running. And just to make a little example, here you can choose how it's sequencing. So what about uh, um, filter? It's the last thing I'm going to show you right now. Uh, because you can explore this by yourself. It's very easy to understand. Um, so let's have a look what's in here. I have an armed I have control sources, uh, audio modifiers. And there should be a filter in there. <clears throat> this is quite a complicated filter here. Ah, okay, let's take this one. I don't know it at all. Uh, I put it down here. Here it is. So I can put in the resonance. I'm not sure if it's going into self-resonance. The amount. And also that one can be modified by an LFO if I put in an uh, LFO. C and change the waveform here. Bipolar and change while everything is running here and put up the clock here. Of course, I can also put in an ADSR and all these things, and uh, the clock can also go in here. Or the trigger can get, get in here, go in here, I go, go from that in here. So, change the pitch here. Uh, and I should have put in also uh, some sort of uh, um, amplifier, I can control uh, uh, how loud it is, and so on and so on. So what? What is it all about? Um, as some of you might know, I'm lecturing at university and I tell my students we started with equipment like this, with the Moog and uh, Sequential and also now it's Eurorack, those days it was big Moog or Buchla systems and it had this haptical thing. Then we went on to the PC and I have these doors like Cubase and FL Studio and Pro Tools, Ableton, Bitwig. I got them all and uh, we have this VST uh, or other connections where we can put in virtual instruments. Uh, it's, it's sort of semi-haptic. You still have the impression, well, I have something I can work with. It's a, it's a PC or everybody wants these controllers. And the next step is this. And uh, this is the beginning of a big step and I really love it. Uh, okay, you can might say, where's the clue? Uh, I, I like to have the haptical thing. It will have all, uh, always its uh, worth, but in the future, I think, uh, more like these things will happen. What can I imagine? Uh, do, use it in educational surroundings. Uh, get more movement into that. Um, not be eclectic, not using uh, uh, classical modules. This is just a starting point. You can uh, invent some other things, how to work with objects, uh, including uh, sample loops and composing with that. Uh, you can integrate this into a bigger, larger virtual door like Transient. Uh, for working uh, under one uh, uh, roof, uh, uh, also including VSC3 instruments. And uh, next thing I believe would be uh, putting the whole thing into AR glasses. We all know uh, uh, Apple is working on uh, uh, AR glasses and as soon as this appears, it might be interesting to see the room and have a screen where I have my workstation and then take uh, tools like this and integrate it. There are many uh, uh, things I can imagine, use it educationally, also for composing, for doing drones. What I'm missing right now is you need more objects like Mirac, 
maybe there could be a market. Uh, you fake some things like mutable or make a deal with uh, make noise. Uh, they import it to the virtual world. And uh, what I also would like to see is a keyboard in there. Uh, and maybe not a, a one classical sort of keyboard. The other could be a, a Bukla style keyboard, uh, like I have here with not uh, make noise pressure points. Um, so there's a lot of uh, good ideas you can see in the future with that. And I'm very thankful that people like David, uh, David are, are doing things like this. And give it a try, check it out. And there's lots of uh, educational and scientific work to be done. What's happening to us? The next discussion will be after, uh, well, here's the original. This is, no, the first was I have a, a, a piano or, or a violin. Then I have, have an electronic instrument. Everyone was discussing. This is not natural. And then we move to VST. Everybody's discussing. Is it better? And now the, the, the next step is going virtual. And there's a lot of things uh, we have to know. And uh, don't um, be fixed to ideologies. Think about it. Do research of, of that if you can do. I try to do some. And have fun with it. It's fun. It's music. And thank you for this wonderful plugin. You can uh, get it on Steam. It's Synth VR by 42 turns. Thanks. <laughs>